Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah, uh, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. We're very happy to have uh, yet another Facebook live session with the scholars of South Ilahi. We're going to continue on the class with Imam Talud Dawood, Knowing the Path to Allah by Sheikh Al-Arabi Al-Sayh Al-Tijani. Imam Talud Dawood uh, is a student of knowledge from the United States who has studied Arabic and the religion for over 10 years. He specializes in Arabic translation and Hanafi fiqh. He currently resides in Mexico, where he has taught and served as imam for the last six years. Finally, he is a murid and an authorized muqaddam of Sheikh Muhammad Al-Mahi Sise. Inshallah, without further ado, uh, Bismillah, Imam, for your class. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. A'udhu billahi minash shaitan wa rajim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, Maliki Yawm Al-Deen. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad al-Fatiha lima ugrika wal-Khatimi lima sabaqa. Nasir al-Haqi bil-Haqi wal-Hadi ila siratika al-Mustaqim. Wa ala alihi haqa qadri wa miqdarihi al-Azim. Allahumma allamna ma yanfa'una wa anfa'na bima tu'allimuna wa zidna min fadlika ilma wa ta'liman. إنك على كل شيء قدير ربنا أتينا من لدنك رحمة وهيئ لنا من أمننا رشدا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. Okay, uh, we're going to uh, continue إن شاء الله and uh, we were talking about the etiquettes of the different uh, stations of the religion at this point. So the Sheikh uh, Al Arabi Ibn Sayh in this section he explained the importance of etiquette uh, from the point of view of the Quran and Sunnah. And he explained what etiquette is, where it, it doesn't just mean being courteous. It doesn't just mean being gentle. It also means that you, uh, you it means that you put everything in its proper place. And so, you know, uh, when it is time to be firm, you are firm. When it is time to be lenient, you are lenient. And this is the adab of uh, the, the prophets and messengers, alayhim salam And this is the adab of their uh, inheritors among the scholars and the awliya. And then he moves on to uh, quote some of the things that the imams have said about, uh, about etiquette, about adab. And then finally, he's going to... to uh, explain to us some of, some of the adab that relate to the uh, the stations of the religion. And so uh, the stations of the religion, this is a, a, a different um, topic uh, from the course or, or from our, our lectures. However, it is good to look at what, what is he, he's talking about. And so we have the, the, uh, the hadith of Jibreel alayhi salam where Umar who said that you know a man who uh, whose clothes were extremely white and his uh, hair was extremely black and showed no signs of, of uh, travel came uh, came up to them one day while they were sitting with the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he came until he sat right in front of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he he. He, he kind of connected his knees to his knees, meaning that he, he placed his knees against the knees of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then he placed his hands on his on his thighs, meaning that he placed his hands on his own thighs. And he said, O Messenger of Allah, akhbirni uh, anil Islam. Tell me what is Islam. And so the Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam answered that Islam is to do the Shahada, uh, to pray, uh, to, to establish the prayer, meaning that to, to perform the prayer um, uh, with steadfastness and to, um, to, uh, fast during, uh, to pay the zakat, to fast during Ramadan, and to do hajj if you are able. And so, you know, after this, the man said, Tell me what is iman, faith. And the Prophet وسلم, said that you believe in Allah, his angels, his books, his messengers, 
and uh, the the last day, and that the destiny, the also the good and the bad of the destiny is from Allah, Subhanahu wa Taala. And so, you know, he he told him six pillars of the faith that one has has to have absolute conviction about. And he said, "Akhbirni alil ihsan." You know, he said that ihsan is to worship Allah as though you see Him, because even if you do not see Him. He certainly sees you. And so um, from this, we have the dimensions of the religion as explained by many of the scholars um, before us and, and that they and, and contemporary scholars also that uh, the, the dimensions of the religion are three, Islam, Iman, and Ihsan. And the person who uh, practices Islam and on the level of Islam is called a Muslim. The person who practice, uh, practices Islam on the level of Iman is called a, a mu'min or a believer. And the person who practices Islam practices Islam on the level of, of Ihsan is called a muhsin or one who acts ex excellently. And so these are three levels of practicing the religion. And uh, from the point of view of uh, of uh, tasawwuf, um, the uh, Islam, the level of Islam, relates to the acts of the 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 the, the body, the phys the physical acts, and this relates to the Sharia. And so, anybody who is practicing Islam on the level of Islam is called uh, is practicing according to the, the, the Sharia, meaning he is adhering to the limits of the Sharia. And anybody who goes further and practices Islam on the level of Iman, then this person is called a, a mu'min and he is a, a, he is a person of tariqah. And so um, the uh, Islam, the level of Islam is the level of the ordinary people. Once you step on the, the, the tariqah, then you become of the people of Iman, you become of the people of the, the people um, who are uh, special for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so, you know, you, you are required to have a, a higher level than just sticking to the, the uh, exterior purport, the, the, um, the uh, rulings related to the body and so you you become concerned um, after practicing the Sharia, you become concerned with the states of the heart or wh what is called the uh, the acts of the heart. And so you become concerned with the heart's traits. You know, is it uh, does it harbor envy? Does it ha harbor um, malice? Does it uh, does it uh, have a problem with anger? All of these things, you know, does it have a problem with with laziness, you know, when it comes to, to worshiping Allah correctly? All of these things are from the traits of the heart, you know, and you try to inculcate, you know, the, the uh, ikhlas, the absolute sincerity, you try to inculcate uh, the in the heart uh, mercy where there had been malice, you try to uh, inculcate in the heart generosity where there had been greed and, and envy. And so all of these things are the acts of the heart. And that is the concern of tariqah. And so um, he, he, Islam is to practice Islam on the level of the body. Iman is to practice Islam with the heart involved. And then Ihsan is the to, is to practice Islam on the level of the spirit is to practice Islam on the level of the spirit. And that is to always be in the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so these are the three dimensions of Islam. And each dimension is made up of three um, way stations or three stages. And so the three stages of Islam are uh, are uh, tawbah repentance, istiqamah, um, 
steadfastness or uprightness and taqwa or uh, God fearingness. And then there are three uh, levels to Iman, which are uh, Ikhlas, Sidq, uh, Sidq, Ikhlas, and Tama'nina. Sidq, or truthfulness, Ikhlas, sincerity, and Tama'nina, which is uh, tranquility. And uh, so th there's a difference of, of uh, difference here between the the uh, the ordering of Sidq and, and Ikhlas from um, Sidi al uh, uh, Buja uh, at Tijani, who wrote Mizab uh, al Rabbaniya, and from Sidi al Arabi bin Sayyid, and uh, between Sheikh Ibrahim Niyas, and so we um, we are. Uh, from the line of, of uh, Sheikh Ibrahim Niyas. And so we say that Sidq is becomes before Ikhlas and that Sidq is more specific while um, Taqwa is, mo is more comprehensive. And so Taqwa uh, for us is more, is stronger. Uh, no, no, not Taqwa, sorry. Sidq is, uh, is specific and uh, ikhlas is more uh, is more uh, comprehensive, and so ikhlas is stronger than sidq uh, in our opinion. And uh, and then you have tamanina, which is tranquility, and that is where the heart no longer um, it, it becomes extinguished from its own sincerity, and becomes completely. Uh, Completely at rest in the presence of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and then in, in the uh, in the last st uh, of the dimensions of the religion and ihsan, there are also three different uh, stages, and these three different stages are um, a, a muraqaba or a const constant vigilance or constant awareness of the vigilance of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala depending on the, the interpretation of, of that you follow. And then there's mushahada, which is witnessing the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directly. And then there is ma'rifa, and ma'rifa is to know Allah. And ma'rifa for us, uh, or ma'rifa means, um, according to Sheikh Ahmed Tijani, is to give every everything that has a right its proper due. And so, uh, for example, the right of, of, of uh, lordship is that it is is that it be praised. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Rububiyyah, the right of lordship is that it be praised. You know, um, the right of of, uh, of of being God is that it is that God be uh, worshipped. Um, Ilah is what is worshipped. Allah is he who is worshipped. And you know the right of uh, the uh, Al Rahman is that you call upon him, you know, and you ask him for his gifts. The right, the right of Al Rahim is that you repent and hope in, hope in his his mercy in the next world. And so the, these are the uh, the you know the the Arif. He gives everything its proper due at, at the level that it is due. You know, and, and when it comes to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he gives Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam his his proper due. And when it comes to the uh, people, uh, the the elect people of of his spiritual path, then he venerates them as is their proper due. And he gives the the people the 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 ordinary uh, his fellow murids upon the path, he gives them their proper due of respect and and uh, special love. And deference and uh, these things. So, so in all things, he is constantly giving everything that has a right upon him its proper due, and neither thing that has a right upon him distracts him from the other. And so, his uh, fulfilling the right of his family does not distract him from Allah. His fulfilling the right of Allah does not distract him from his family. And this is the Arif Billah, this is the Noah of Allah, and this is the stage that we would all love uh, to, to reach, and we ask Allah to allow us to reach it. And so, and so those, those are nine stages or nine stations 
uh, of the religion. And Sidi al Arabi ibn Sayyid, he is going to explain to us um, the, the, the etiquettes or, or the, the um, main etiquettes of those nine stages. And so we, uh, we, we're going to read that, inshallah. We actually read part of it last week, uh, but we, we are going to uh, begin, uh, inshallah, and, and, uh, and do a little review, inshallah. So Sidi al Arabi ibn Sayyid says, and what will increase you, or will increase your realization of what we have indicated along the way of the high status of excellent etiquette, and that is one of the most important matters and the strongest means to the person who wishes to arrive to the presence of the Lord, Lord of Lords, is that the noblemen, the, peop the noble people of this domain, the noble people of this affair, meaning the noble people of Tasawwuf and its notable brilliant scholars have stated that for every one of the stations of the dimensions of the religion, ha um, there are etiquettes. There are etiquettes that are specific to it, according to the people of realization. And among that which is specific to the first of the three stations of the dimension of Islam, which is the station of repentance, which is like the earth upon which every state and station is built, is that the person abandoned keeping the company of those whose states lessen his understanding. He abandoned keeping the company of those whose states lessen his understanding. And so um, inshallah, later on, we're going to get into the etiquettes of companionship. And so when we, when we get into that, we will go through uh, what, what exactly so it, it, Sidi al Arabi ibn Sayyid, what he does is he discusses only the etiquettes of companionship with people on the path. However, we will give a, a, um, a, a sort of dichotomy about, or a sort of explanation about the different etiquettes that we owe everybody. So we owe, so we owe our Muslim brethren, all of them, certain rights, six of them, six rights. And those that are closer to us, we owe them a little more. And, and, and the, the family members that, that are not Muslim, we owe them certain rights. The family members that are Muslim, we owe them you know, um, the, the rights of Muslims and something more. And so we will get into that inshallah. But basically you should avoid keeping the company of those who states um, lessen his understanding means that for everybody that it does not, his, his state doesn't correspond or doesn't help you along the path, then you give him his rights, you know, and if you are able to, without, without lowering yourself, you are able to, then you give him a little more, but if not, then you give him his rights and, and you go along your way. You don't, you don't keep his company because he will bring you down. And so uh, you, the, the first is that you abandon keeping the company of those whose states lessen, uh, lessen your understanding. And he should keep the company of those whose states uh, correspond to his and seeking fervently and arduously the satisfaction of Allah exalted is he. And that he, uh, uh, so that is the second etiquette. And the third is and that, that he avoid places of amusement and shamelessness. And he should never mention, this is the fourth etiquette, he should never mention anything among the pleasures that he used to indulge in, except with a, sor um, a sorrowful and sad heart. So he's saying that, and he says, it is not possible for the penitent person, the person who is doing repentance, to seek the... Uh, to seek the good while abandoning any of these four etiquettes. So it's not your, your repentance. Um, so your repentance will be valid if you fulfill the conditions. So we can't say that it won't be valid. However, you should, until you fulfill the condition, the, the etiquettes, then your repentance is, is, uh, it need, needs some work and you shouldn't move past the station of repentance. 
So that those are the etiquettes of the station of repentance. And then he goes on to say, and from that which is specific to the station of this uh, of this dimension, which the second station of this dimension, the dimension of Islam, which is the the dimension of the steadfastness, is the is the karma inwardly and outwardly in one's dealings with the creator of humankind is that he should follow the beloved messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam in word deed movement or lack thereof whether they return to worship or custom in a diligent and perpetual way so he should um he should follow the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam in both his custom customary practices and his sunnah you know, um, and, and we explained last week that there are things that the Prophet Sallallahu did that you can actually follow him in, you know, and you should try to do at least once. You know, one of those is uh, parting one's hair down the middle if he is able. Uh, another is wearing four braids while on uh, while traveling. These things are, are, are customs of the Prophet Sallallahu and they don't uh, return specifically to worship, uh, but you know um, it is good. But the person who is ha, who wants to perfect his istiqama follows the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in everything. And then he continues: for by consensus of the scholars of the people of Gnosis, he sallallahu alaihi wasallam never did anything whatsoever that did that did not contain some worship. In terms of his words and deeds, one should try to emulate them in their entirety. And in terms of his movements and lack thereof, one should seek to regulate his movements and moments of stillness through following him in, uh, at all times and in all states. In addition, uh, so this is these are two etiquettes. So you should emulate his words and deeds completely. And so how do you do this? Uh, like we said last week, you read the books where the, these things ha, are the focus. Uh, Riyadhul Salihain um, is a good book to read where one learns the different etiquettes of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in all of his daily dealings. And so this, is, this would be, uh, you should read it, reflect upon it and try to, to put it into practice. In terms of words and deeds, one should try to emulate them in their entirety in terms of movements. So the second etiquette is that you uh, you emulate him and his customary and his, his daily uh, routines. And so how he woke up, you know, so he woke up and he would uh, wash his hands first, wash his face and then brush his teeth. This is something that you would emulate. Um, the, so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, you know, he, how he drunk water, he would sip the water one, two, you know, and, and, and sips, and he would drink it in three sips and he would not gulp it all down. You know, these are things that you emulate. They aren't, they are not, you know, um, they are not specific acts of worship. However, you're, you know, as a, as a person who was trying to perfect his, Istiqama, you need to follow the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and everything. And so those are the first two etiquettes. Then he goes on, in addition to the follow to following the Sunnah, he should curb his ego with constraints that correspond to the sacred law. So that's the third etiquette, curbing your ego. The fourth etiquette, he should also avoid opposing views and act and the act of his following by acting upon the strictness of them. And so this is the, the, the fourth etiquette is that you should try and where, where people have a difference of opinion and that difference of opinion results in uh, a sort of, uh, well, one of them, one of the opinions is more lenient and one of the opin opinions is more strict then istiqama requires you to, uh, to actually uh, seek out the, the stricter opinion um, in this. And he should do away with confusion and all of that by stopping at the prescribed limits. And so what, is, what is, does this mean? He does not get involved in doubtful matters. Um, so that's the fifth etiquette. 
And so, and then he says, it is not possible for anyone who lacks any of these five etiquettes to adorn himself with istiqama, with steadfastness, neither in its spiritual nor its physical meaning. So then he moves on and he says, from, and from that which has been specified for the third of these stations, which is the station of conscious awareness, taqwa, which is the emblem of every prophet and the provisional goal of every majestic and successful person is that one should completely free himself from censure by guarding against doubtful matters, which are probably the problematic issues that are found on the border between the lands of the licit and the illicit. And so we find this, uh, the, so you should free, free yourself from censure, which means that you avoid the blame of people and you avoid the blame of Allah, Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by keeping away from doubtful matters. So the doubtful matters, uh, the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you know, he said that, you know, um, that the in uh, the uh, the uh, the halal the licit or the the permissible or lawful is clear or in the harama and the illicit is also clear so in between them or uh, between the licit the the haram the halal and the haram there are different there are doubtful matters which only a few people know which only a few people know so if someone avoids the doubtful matters you know um then he will uh he will uh exonerate himself he will he will save his religion and his honor in other words his religion will be sound and he will be his he will be free from censure and blame. But if someone uh, comes to the doubtful matters, he will inevitably come to the uh, the uh, the haram, the illicit matters. And then he, he compared it to a, a shepherd who lets his flock uh, graze close to the the hemat, close to the sanctuary of the king. And the, the king, uh, you know, he will inevitably let them graze in the sanctuary itself. And he said, you know, it is like, you know, every king has a sanctuary. And this, the sanctuary of Allah is, is what he has prohibited. You know, um, and it, so, so this is what we have to do is we have to avoid censure by not sitting on the fence. We should uh, avoid all the problematic issues and uh, try to stick only to the limits of the Sharia. And that, and so that is the first etiquette of Taqwa. The second etiquette of Taqwa is that, he, and that he should be careful as much as he can from going into excess, excess with that which is licit. And so, um, you know, for example, uh, eating. You know, we go into excess with eating. Uh, this is a, a major issue in our time. The may, one of the, there are two uh, very, very, uh, very, very serious issues with the people of our time, and we take them lightly, and they are not to be taken lightly. The first is we are very excessive in what we eat and drink. And so, um, Shay Ibrahim Niaswaradilawan, we said that the nafs is only disciplined by hunger. And so, the, the fact that our, we go into excess with our food and drink, it shouldn't be any wonder that our nafs is uncontrollable in this time. And the second thing that we take very, very lightly is gossip. Is gossip. And we, we, uh, we speak. You know, um, and we are not careful with our speech. And subhanAllah, this is, this is, these two things are, are deadly. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam grabbed the, uh, the tongue of uh, Mu'adh ibn Jabal. Uh, no, is is uh, Mu'adh ibn Jabal? 
Yes, it's Ma'ad ibn Jabal. He grabbed the tongue of Ma'ad ibn Jabal. And he said, you know, he, he said, you know, um, guard this. And, that, and he asked him, do you, do you want me to, to, um, to inform you of what is the most important of all matters in, in regards to, uh, to, to, uh, to being able to practice your deen correctly? And he grabbed his tongue and he said, guard this. And, and Mu'adh ibn Jabal said, you know, O Messenger of Allah, will we be judged or will we be taken to task for what we say? And he, and he said, are people dragged upon their faces or upon their noses and cast into hellfire, except through what their tongue, and, you know, uh, through what their tongue, the harvest of their tongue, except through what their tongue produces. And so we, we have to be very careful with what we say, and we have to be very careful with what we eat and drink. And uh, gossip is a very, very, very widespread thing. And, and um, unfortunately, uh, it, 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 it really turns out that some people who start out doing something good, um, it, it it turns into gossip and this is, you know, um, trying to, uh, trying to, to bring awareness to the fact that they are fake, you know, there are fake, uh, uh, there, there are scholars who, who take advantage of people. And when doing so, you know, um, some people go to excess and they do not, they do not, um, guard their tongue carefully. And so they end up uh, just being basically gossipers, you know, which is, you know, is, is haram. And so uh, these are things that, that we have to be very, very careful of in our time. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us strength um, to, to guard our tongue and to guard our stomach, because that would go a long way to solving many of the issues that we, you know, we, we face um, and many of the uh, the spiritual sicknesses that we have. And so he should be careful from going into excess with that which is licit. And in doing so, he should avoid going into excess and exaggeration through uh, and use and be perfectly moderate. And so what does he mean by this? This is the third, uh, the third etiquette is when you're, when you're actually avoiding excess, you don't want to go into excess it or exaggerate, you know, so for example, if you're used to eating a bowl of cereal in the, in the morning, you don't want to take, you know, four cereal grains and eat it and, and say, okay, I'm avoiding excess. No. I mean, if you want to, to decrease what you eat, then you decrease it in the way that, that has, has been explained, uh, such as, uh, Imam al-Ghazali has said that, you know, you, you eat a 10th less than you eat, you would, would have eaten the, the day before the day before. So, um, if you eat, you know, for example, 180 grams of cereal, then you would eat 162 grams of cereal until you are satisfied with that and you don't add to it. And then you will go to, um, a hundred, you would, you would go to 10% of 162 grams. This is how you, uh, you, uh, moderate you're eating and you, and you stop going into excess. You don't do it through exaggeration and excess. And so, uh, one of the, one of the things that, that, uh, um, that is common, uh, amongst the youth, especially those who, um, who study a little fiqh and, uh, and don't really have any taraviya, they may have a weird, they may have, have a tariqa but they don't really ha stick to any murabi and get tarabiya. And one of the things that we see with, with people, people like that is that they try to stick to whatever is the strictest uh, understanding in any book of fiqh, you know, without, you know, without gauging how the, their nas will react to it. And so we see them go um, and, and go back and forth between trying to be strict 
and being completely lawless. Um, and and uh, and it's it's a shame because we we must do this in in moderation. We must not um, apply the strictest sense in in every sense, you know, without uh, uh, without uh, first training our nafs to um, to get there. You know, so basically that goes back to the etiquette, the, the main etiquette of Tasawwuf, the main etiquette of a, a person who is seeking Allah is to worship Allah in his state and not to seek a state that he, he is not able to maintain. And so uh, these are these are just things that we have observed um, in in uh, in the people of our time and in ourselves, really, um, subhanAllah. And we, we try to we need to try and fix that and we need to try and uh, understand exactly you know um what is going on and, and try to repair it because it's it's uh causing havoc in our in our societies so he should uh be free from exaggeration and and uh uphold complete moderation and then he says uh, the fourth etiquette and in that he should cover himself as much as he is able so that he will be free of showing off and disputes of the ordinary people who are subject to their ep epic. And so this is the people that I was speaking about. So you should, um, so when you are being moderate and when you are avoiding excess, then you should, it should not be something that people notice in you. And so, um, you know, if it comes to a point where someone may notice it in you, then you eat to what they're there and, well, basically, if you're avoiding excess, and you know the and you're with people who eat more than what you're at, what you you you're usually uh, uh, accustomed to, then you should not eat so much less that it would be noticeable. So you should try to approach what they're eating. You know, you should try to cover yourself so that you, you there's no. Um, so that there's no uh how is that uh so that there's no no temptation for your nafs meaning that you're not showing off you're not trying to uh to uh be the uh be be seen by people and so you know one one of the things that i asked uh sheikh muhammad and mahi sisi um is that i asked him about you know um how do you know, you know, um, how is it, you know, uh, how do you know you that, that you have permission for something? And so Shaykh he said, you know, um, the, that you, uh, you have permission if it is, if it is facilitated for you. And if it is f facilitated for you, uh, then that is your, your sign that you have permission. But one of the, he, he mentioned that um, many people have permission, but have been refute, have been forbidden to announce that permission so that the Nas may not have any, um, any share in that. So uh, one of the things of, uh, in your wara, because uh, this, this not going into excess is, is termed wara. It's uh, it's termed uh, caution or or scrupulousness, and in your wara, then you should have wara from your nafs also, and so you should be aware of the the uh, the traps of the nafs, and you should uh, you should not give in to or, or uh, you should not put it put yourself in a situation where your nafs can gain gain an upper hand, meaning you should not uh, w where it would be become boastful. And so he says, and from that, uh, which is specified for the first of the stations of Iman, no, no, I'm sorry. He says, and these are the four etiquettes without the entirety of which taqwa is not complete. And so you have to have these four etiquettes to complete your taqwa. And from that, which is specified for the first of the stations of, of the dimension of Iman, uh, we have moved on to the dimension of Iman, which is the station of exclusivity of worship in Khlas, 
which means to correct one's turning towards Allah exalted as he, so that it is characterized by pure slavehood and open and in secret, is that one should beware of losing his ikhlas through being overtaken by he heedlessness. So that's the first etiquette. You should, you should beware, you should be afraid of losing your ikhlas by being overtaken by, uh, by heedlessness. And that, uh, so you, heedlessness here means that you, you become lazy in your worship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you abandon um, certain uh, acts of worship that you used to do for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that, uh, that, you, that you accuse the ego of falsehood and its claim to, complete up, uh, to completely uphold the perfection, uh, to perfection the duty of ikhlas. So if you feel that you're a mukhlis, then you uh, you blame your ego and you say your ego is getting in the way and you say you know and you turn it back towards what you know it's it's uh or you you make it look towards its evil state so that you do not uh believe that you have perfected a class and that that is the second etiquette the third etiquette that he should flee to allah exalted is he from all of that seeking refuge in him blessed is he through supplication and humble entreaty. So that, that's the third etiquette is that you should seek Allah. You should flee to Allah from your ego. You should flee to Allah from heedlessness and you should ask him, uh, you know, through, through supplicating him and humbly uh, imploring him, you should ask him to grant you a, a way out of the, those, those evil, evil states and a way into complete, uh, complete ikhlas. And so the fourth, that, that's the three, third etiquette and the fourth etiquette and that he require, um, that he require from ikhlas, ikhlas from his soul in his indulging in that which is licit and his, and his normal habits as much as one is able because this is the elixir of the people of this work because it converts the licit and habitual matters into complete worship among the greatest way, um, and it is among the greatest ways of seeking nearness and, and the best forms of obedience. And so what, what he's saying here is that you make your intention, uh, you make your intention and you know, all of these ha habits, the, these uh, normal human habits, you make your intention to seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so, and in that way, even your, your um, taking pleasure with your wife will become acts of, ob of obedience. And if someone lacks any of these four characteristics, it is not possible under any circumstance for him to correct his turning towards Allah exalted as he. And from that which is specific to the second station of faith, the station of sincerity, which is the freedom uh, uh, the the freedom, which is the freedom of one's dealings with Allah exalted to see from being admixed with the machinations of the soul is that one should guard one's thoughts at all times. So you, you basically siddh or uh, sincerity is that all of your dealings with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be free from uh, the the inclinations of your your nafs. Uh, so and from the etiquette of sincerity is that you guard your thoughts at all times. Um, the second etiquette is that he should connect his heart with the hidden world. The third etiquette is that he should seek out the wisdom and the different modes of being. Um, the the wisdom. So you should seek out the wisdom and. Uh, for example, the uh, and the the animal kingdom, the wisdom and the arrangement of the night and day, the wisdom, the all of these things that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala tells us to uh, to contemplate, you should seek out the wisdom in that. And the fourth is that he should incriminate the soul if it fails to uphold the rights of creation, according to the assigned limits. And so you you this this um. This means that you know you um, you should like any any time that you're you commit a, a or you you step out of the etiquette 
that you should have with creation, um, then you uh, then you uh, accuse yourself and you 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 reprimand yourself. And the fifth is that he should abandon taking the strictest interpretation in order to avoid changing and turning people's hearts. And this is this is this is so important, Subhanallah. And so the fifth etiquette is that you is that you apply lenient interpretations when uh, take when uh, when possible, so that you maintain people's hearts turned towards Allah, and you maintain people's hearts uh, attached to the religion. And so that is the the. Uh, those are the five etiquettes. And uh, this last one is very important. Many of the, the preachers and imams of, of today, um, they refuse to give any leniency. And they even, um, many of the critics of the scholars of today, uh, they accuse the scholars of, of uh, watering down the religion uh, when the scholars give people you know, the, these uh, lenient interpretations in order to maintain their heart, you know, turn towards the religion. And this is from the acts of fools. This is the, the, um, the understanding of fools who, who don't, uh, don't have any wisdom. Um, usually they're people who have no tarabiyah. They're not connected to the people of Allah. They're not com connected to the presence of Allah. And they, uh, they are entirely cut off and they have no idea of what their their actions are doing on the uh, in the spiritual realm and they have no um understanding of the re repercussions of what they're doing and so we seek Allah's uh we seek Allah's protection from being amongst those people and so he says, if one is to purify his dealings with the Lord of Lords, it is not possible for him to leave out any one of these five etiquettes. And so, um, let's see how long. Okay, so we're going to finish out the section. It's only about a half a page left. And so we're going to finish out this section. I know it's, uh, it's gone long today, uh, but I wanted to finish this section so that we can start on the, the new section, inshallah, on the, on the etiquettes uh, with, the, with the divine presence, inshallah, next week. And so the third of the stations of faith, the station of tranquility, which is the settlement of the heart in the coolness of certainty, with a calmness that is free from all disturbances and a stillness that resembles the certainty one would have through witnessing, um, from the etiquettes that are specified for it is that one should be eager to perform acts of obedience openly and in secret in a constant and persive, uh, 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 with consistency and perseverance while adhering to the proper etiquette therein. And so the first of the etiquettes is that you desire uh, to perform acts of obedience, whether you're in public or in secret. And so it doesn't matter for, to you. You you just want to to worship, and so you have no uh, no awareness of who's around you. You just want to worship. The second that he should examine his breaths in order to purify them out of fear of being found in a compromising position at the time of the arrival of the effects of vigilant awareness, and so that um, the the second etiquette is that you uh, observe your your breathing. And so the uh, Sheikh Ahmed Tijani said, and this is, he quote, he was quoting uh, Ibn al um, that there are 24,000 breaths in a day. And so um, part of the etiquette of, of vigilant awareness of Muraqaba is that one uh, is aware of each of these uh, uh, breaths that one takes um, breathing in and breathing out, or if he's not aware of each of them, then he is aware of most of them. So the third is that he have no concern for tranquility when it is moved to advance towards the beginning stages of vision and awareness, uh, hurrying towards the latter's firm ascent. And so the, the third etiquette 
is that when when one is pushed towards muraqaba, he is completely unconcerned with being tranquil. He he becomes energetic and flies towards uh, towards uh, muraqaba. The the, the uh, fourth is that that he extinguished the fire of contemplation with the arrival of the fire of inner remembrance without exceeding thereby the limits of of thankfulness, and so uh, so basically he um, that he uh, instead of con he uh, at this point he he begins to uh, remember Allah in his heart. And in his and in his uh, inner secret, and he, in that remembrance, he becomes lost, and so uh, contemplation, uh, you know, is it, he, he contemplates the inner remembrance, and he doesn't contemplate the creation anymore. Um, without exceeding thereby the limits of thankfulness, which means that he still um, pays attention to what Allah wants him to do in creation. And so if that means that he needs to uh, give charity, then he gives charity. If that means that he needs to uh, be with his wife, then he, he is with his wife. And that is part of thankfulness. If a person completes these four characteristics, he will have completed all good. And that is because the station of tranquility is among the greatest doors to sainthood since it is the first of the stages of seeking that is required, uh, that is requited with the lights of divine aid, and from which the wayfaring disciple will breathe the breeze, the will, will um, breathe in the breezes of nearness, and the flashes of witnessing the exalted uh, presence of the Lord will flash upon him. And so, those are the etiquettes for the state, the stations, and the dimension of Islam. And he said, and there are also for each of the stations of the dimensions of Ihsan etiquettes that have been specified for it according to the people of Gnosis. Among them is that one conceal the first secrets that are manifest and appear to him there and keeping, and that he keep the spirit from inclining towards any of those things that he conceals. And so the first secrets that one, one uh, that are revealed to one you must conceal you don't you don't talk about the secrets uh, of your state with anyone and then you don't incline towards it you incline towards what is after it and you incline toward, towards a law which is after everything <coughs> and among those etiquettes instead uh, steadfastness in the face of the first inspiration that arrives to him from the presence of Gnosis. The first inspiration that arrives to him is the first realization, and that is a uh, part of Tarabiya uh, in our path. Um, the, then he, another of the etiquettes is that he retreat and take recourse in the outward when he weakens from being able to carry the burden of what the spirit witnesses. And so if, you know, when, when one um, becomes uh, enamored with what he is witnessing, at this stage, then it is incumbent upon him to enforce the Sharia upon himself, and to um, and to focus on the outward modes of worship. Also among them, and it is among the most important and most perfect of etiquettes in the station of Gnosis, <coughs> is that he should give wisdom to those who are worthy of it and withhold it from those who are not worthy, and so. You don't give with you don't just go around spreading secrets all over. You know we have many people that spread secrets on the internet and talk of of secret things on the internet. You know with, with just openly. <clears throat> if your sheikh uh, suggests that you keep somebody as a, as a as a companion, or if your sheikh suggests that you um, you keep in touch with someone, then that's a person that you can you know share these things with. Other people, you just you you don't you don't share share that wisdom with them, and, and this is something that confuses people because they think that the people that are sharing many of these things online are are the people or or just in general you know talking about these things openly that these are the people who are witnessing these things, and in reality, the people who are witnessing these things are.
are, are in, <clears throat> in concealing them through practicing Islam outwardly. And so th this is, uh, we should not be uh, fooled by appearances. And the stations of this dimension have other etiquettes that the tongue shrinks from expounding upon at this time. And in any case, explaining their nature does, does not grant one clarity on them. Thus, among the etiquettes is that the impotent should refrain from mentioning, mentioning them, meaning the, the person who um, cannot <clears throat> lead someone to understanding these wisdoms should not mention them to that person leaving them to the people of ecstatic experience and considering sufficient that which the, sin the sincere disciple obtains in the way of visual, visual witnessing. <laughs> and he mentions the, the couplet, and a beautiful indication shall suffice you of that, leave it protected behind the veil of majesty. And he, said, he closes, he says, and with that, by the help of Allah, the place of etiquette in this path, and its place in the dimensions of wayfaring is manifest without a doubt. And Allah exalted as he is in charge of facilitating success and he is the guide to the straight path. And so uh, with that, I I'm going to um, turn it over to uh, Sidi Abu, Abu Sufyan, inshallah, and uh, we'll see if there are any questions. Bismillah, Assalamu alaikum Imam. All right, alhamdulillah, that was a very interesting class. Uh, we have a few questions for you, Imam. Inshallah, we begin. We'll dive right in, yeah. Uh, for this class, you mentioned about the stations of Islam, Iman, and Ihsan. Uh, Islam being Tauba, Istiqama, Taqwa, Iman, Siddiq, Ikhlas, Tumanina, and Ihsan, Muraqab, Mushahada, and Ma'rifah. Um, Imam, could you perhaps uh, explain what is the wisdom that Che Bramnias had when he wanted to? clarify uh, these uh, different um, aspects of the stations of the deen? So, I mean, this is, he didn't actually, um, he didn't actually clarify it. Um, uh, he didn't, well, he, he wasn't the first to clarify it. And so um, in the books of the different awliya, yeah. you will find that they clarify this because that is one of the ways of where thing. Uh, where wayfaring and so this is this you know you you do tauba and then you perfect your tauba on the first level and then you move to istiqama on the first level and then you go back to tauba and you perfect it on the second level and then you move to istiqama on the second level you know the, these are different levels uh, of uh you know of the the level of the the uh awam the level of the ordinary people the the level of the khas the elect and then the level of the khas al khas. And so you, you know, these are these are um, a roadmap for wayfaring towards the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so there are different types of wayfaring. Uh, there's wayfaring that involves uh, going one by one with the different uh, evil character traits and removing them and replacing them one by one with uh, with the the, uh, the the pleasant or the, the praiseworthy character traits. And this is wayfaring. And then there's wayfaring of the heart, which is to, to make it go through the different stages of Islam until, one, until it reaches the stage of Ihsan and perfe uh, per perfects itself. And so this is, so the expounding upon these stations of the religion is expounding upon how to wayfare. And or how to travel the path along um, uh, according to that method. And uh, uh, the author of Mizabu Rahmatul Rabbaniya, which is a book that's all about uh, Tijan, the, the, the different modes of Tarabiya in the Tijani path, he, fir he first uh, expounded upon it. And then Sheikh Ibrahim Niyaz, he expounded upon it and clarified some things in, that were in, that were not clear in the in the uh, explanation of uh, the author of Mizabur Rahman. Mashallah. Uh, uh, with regards to this, uh, Imam, is this something? For example, uh, uh, Iman is Sidiq Ikhlas to Manina. Is this something that uh, is like uh, oh, is it like a process that you're constantly trying to do, like in the Maqam of Sidiq and Ikhlas, or is it something like you move on from one to the other? Like how how does that work mm -hmm. out? Yeah. 
No, it, it's it's constant. Um, so, for example, you know, uh, one of the the Maurits of Sheikh Ahmed the January Lawanhu, you know, he, he said, uh, we we are fuqara, we are we are uh, are uh, the the needy people of Allah subhanahu wa taala, and Sheikh Ahmed the January Lawanhu said, don't don't make that claim. We have yet to perfect the, the station of Tauba. <laughs> Allah. And so, uh, you know, this, this is, you know, it, it, so Tauba is the basis mm -hmm. for everything. And, you know, the, the Sheikh, Ahmed, Sheikh, uh, Muhammad, Sheikh Muhammad and Mahi Sisi said, you know, there's no station that you'll get to on the path where you won't need Tauba. And so, you, you know, anywhere you go, you're going to have to go back to Tauba. And Tauba, all of these, so, so the Tauba is the, the, the foundation, you know. And then, um, and then uh, istiqama and uh, taqwa is like the essence of the sawuf. Mm -hmm. And then you get to to the inner dimensions, which are are the dimensions of the heart. And so, mm -hmm. it, in reality, all of these different stations, if you actually look at how these these stations, all of these different stations are in reality inner realities or inner dimensions of Tauba. Hmm. They all string from Tauba. And so it's not a, oh, I, I perfected Sid, so I'm going to go to a class. No, you're constantly in, in observing your Sid to make sure that it's intact. You're constantly, that's why uh, a lot of Ibn Sayyid said that for a class, you, um, you must make your nafs understand that it, it anytime it claims perfect uh, uh it that it has perfect class that it is making a false claim and so because you need to constantly perfect your class you know when it comes to you know um muraqaba and mushahida and and, uh, and malifa and so um you know you you will you know you will constantly use those as your your stepping stones to more, uh, so you you'll go back to Muraqaba and contemplate Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, contemplate what what Allah has has uh, inspired you with, or contemplate something that your Sheikh said, and so this will lead you to witnessing that thing, and this will lead you to Marifa of that thing, and then you you'll get to some uh, somewhere else. And then you'll go back and you'll, you'll do muraqaba and mushahada and ma'ari. But these, these things are repeated constantly on the path. It's not, it's not mm -hmm. a, a, uh, a it's, there's no destination really. Um, there's, there's only, there's only wayfaring towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm -hmm. And since one can never fully know Allah, one can never, you know, fully complete his path. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it goes on forever. Inshallah. I think that's a very uh, important thing that you mentioned about one can never fully know Allah. You know, uh, thank you for clarifying okay. that, Imam. Yeah, Im Imam, um, I think we've got to this as well. I think when we read uh, about the different stations as well, sometimes when we see, um, when they mention Siddiq, they say, I mean, you mentioned, you mentioned here Siddiq is sincerity, but, uh, you know, Sometimes I get confused with ikhlas or for us to ikhlas to mean sincerity. Could you clarify the difference between siddiq and ikhlas in that sense? Um, so Sheikh, Sheikh Muhammad and Mahi told, told us that siddiq is that you have one direction in the path. And so that means that you, you know, um, you don't look towards one direction or another direction. You're constantly going one way. And no, no matter what happens, you're going one way. And uh, the first part of this is sticking, is finding a murabbi and sticking to that murabbi. Mm -hmm. And through sticking to that murabbi, then your siddh is perfected and you, your siddh moves on to concentration on Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and then concentration on, on Allah. And then ikhlas is that Allah remove you from creation. That What that means is that he remove you from witnessing creation Mashallah. and your nafs is creation so as long as you are aware of your own nafs then this is not a khas Mashallah. okay thank you so that, that, that's, that's I, I i try to stick to what, what sheikh, <laughs> sheikh 
uh, was Sheikh Mahi told us. So. I'm sure I'm sure you could have an entire class just on uh, that, you know, subhanAllah. Um, Maybe yeah. we could ask Sheikh to do that because I, I don't think I could explain anything further than that. Thank you. <laughs> so. Thank you, Imam. All right. Uh, Imam, you mentioned that uh, Riyadu Salihin are one of the books that you recommend uh, for us to learn more about the etiquettes of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Could, you, could you recommend other books as well? Um, I mean, it, the, the, the books of the, the Awliya, you know, um, Ruh al-Adab goes into, you know, some of the etiquettes that are, are, um, are from the Sunnah. Like you, 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 when you go into the, the, uh, the way that he wrote the poem, if you, you know, like shaking hands, this is, this is, uh, shake, shaking hands and walking to the masjid and he's talking about these things. This, this is directly from a hadith, you know, so, um, the books of Awliya are, are filled with it. Um, there's, uh, there's a bigger book than Riyadh Salihin, which is, uh, is read and, and, uh, the Diobandi schools, uh, which is, uh, um, what is it? Uh, uh, so the, these are books that, so, so you, you know, any book that is dealing with, um, particular hadiths that deal with, uh, actions uh, or how to, you know, or, or describing the prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam state, these things are, are, you know, these books are good. Uh, when it comes to books like Bukhari or um, Tirmidhi, these are these books are actually describing the entire, you know, the, the entirety of the Sunan of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And so they're at, they they they're good, they're great, and you you should study them with a scholar and and try to to understand them. But the books, the ajza, the books that are are uh, Put together specifically for that purpose are uh, much better uh, and much easier uh, to approach. Thank you, uh, Imam. You also mentioned that uh, in this day and age, it's very important for us to guard our tongue and our stomach, and this will help us to solve many of the spiritual sicknesses. Uh, do you have any recommendation? Because right now, you know, in this day and age, it's very easy to fall into like people hearing gossip and backbiting, this kind of things. And of, of course, like all the buffets going around, uh, is there any uh, recommendation that you have? Um, yep. Just, you know, um, anytime you see fitna, just, just walk away. Um, so, you know, I believe we are living in a time, you know, uh, Allah knows best, but I believe we are living in a time where Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that, you know, you will have um, the fitness will be like, you know, the, the, the darkness you know, uh, the dark part of the night, you know, or, or they will come like waves on the ocean, you know, and uh, I, I believe we are living in that time. And, and uh, you know, in the time where Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said there would be, you know, fitness where, you know, the person who is, uh, is uh, standing is better than the person walking. Uh, the person who is sitting is better than the person standing. You know, and if someone looks over the cliff, then he will fall off. Meaning that even just, you know, uh, being concerned with what's going on will get you involved in the fitna. And so, uh, if you see fitna, just try to try to uh, be quiet. You know, because even trying to call the attention to to people that what they're doing is fitna will get you involved in fitna. And so you just uh, just avoid it, <laughs> avoid it completely. And, you know, um, make sure that, you know, even, you know, you don't want to ever hear gossip, uh, but people, but you know, you, it's, it's something that, that is so natural for people these days that you can just be in the store and people just start gossiping. You're, you're yeah. in the, you're in line in the grocery store and people just start gossiping and, and it may be somebody, you know, it may be not, but you know, you're mm -hmm. hearing gossip. So it's very hard to not hear gossip. Um, you should try your best not to. But at the very least, make sure that your tongue doesn't gossip. You know, um, you know, you know, you never say anything about anybody. Inshallah. Inshallah. Thank you, Imam. Um, I think I also want to mention about something that you said about. Um, oh yes, you mentioned that from the etiquette of sincerity is that you guard your thoughts at all times from the lessons. Um, you know, what would what do people do if you know you have 
bad thoughts or ill feelings, all these things that come, you know, uh, what is the response for such things? Um, so you, so bad thoughts used to seek, seek refuge in Allah. Um, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, you know, Allah has, has pardoned for my ummah, you know, the, uh, the, uh, their mistakes and, you know, the, the, he, he also said that the thoughts that we don't, that we don't act upon. And so, um, the, these thoughts are, are not good, you know, but we, we should, you know, for example, what, one of the things that, you know, um, I, I found out later that, you know, Sheikh Hamza Yusuf said in a, in a class, but one of the things that I started to practice a very long time ago is that, you know, anytime I would have a bad thought about somebody, I would try to make dua for them. Inshallah. Mm. You know, um, so, you know, say I, I had, so, you know, brother Abdul Rahman over there, you know, he's this. Oh, okay. So I, if I think that, then I make dua for the person. You know, um, and I, I later found out that, you know, Sheikh Hamza used to said it in, in the class, you know, um, but I had started practicing a, lo a long time before that. You, you have to, to try to, you know, remedy these bad thoughts by good thoughts, inshallah. Inshallah. Thank you so much, uh, Imam. Uh, I think this will probably be the last question. I think it's one of the most important things that you shared in your lesson about not talking about the secrets of your state with anyone. Uh, how do we know if something is a kind of thing that we should openly talk about or not? And how do you deal with people who talk about secrets online? So there are two parts of the question. Now. Firstly, how do you know something's to be shared or not? And secondly, is like, how do you deal with people who are talking about secrets uh, online? And, you know. Um, so um, <laughs> uh, anything that you can't explain to somebody with a, uh, a verse of Quran or hadith, it's probably something you need to, to conceal. That's first. Um, secondly, anything that, you know, anything that, that really doesn't relate to, to uh, what people are, are obligated to do, you know, and the religion is probably not a good idea to, to be talking about op openly. So, um, because it's, it's just, it, it causes confusion. So for example, um, you have the, the, uh, the Abandis and, and the Rewi, um, the, these two groups, they fight over whether Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, uh, wit is uh, present and witnessing of his, with his, uh, his Ummah, you know, um, if you get a, if you get an inspiration regarding this, then you should hide it. You, the reason why is because this is not something that's obligatory for anybody to believe. And it's not something that is haram for anybody to believe. And so, you know, just mentioning it causes confusion. And we see that people mentioned this, you know, um, Sheikh Ahmed Reda Khan, you know, he, he actually, um, he mentioned this, you know, to his Marines and they started to spread it and it caused confusion. Why? Because this is not something that people should, you know, should be focused on. And so for, in, in reality, you know, the people, the majority of the people are focused on the outward and you should only, you know, uh, express the outward to them. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, the people of Tariqa are focused on the inward, but not everybody is witnessing. And oh, so right. you, you speak about, you know, Tariqa in, in general terms, but you save the, 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 the terms for witnessing for the, the people that your sheikh assigns you to or the, peop the people that your sheikh, you know, advises you to keep their company. You know, um, that's, that's the first part. The second part of the question was... The online talk. About uh, how do you deal with people that uh, yeah. avoid... Uh, so um, avoid them like the plague. <laughs> that, you know, this is just avoid... Because this is the... Any, you know... Um, Shaykh Ibrahim Niyaz said, he says, this is uh, revealing the divine secrets is worse than the Kaba'ir. Mm. You know, so you, if someone is revealing the divine secrets, you should just, you know, leave them. A and Sorry, Imam, what's the Kaba'ir? Just, just to share. I mean, Shaykh Ibrahim, Kaba'ir is, is the major sins. 
And so if someone is is uh is revealing, you know, divine secrets online and stuff like that, you should avoid them. And uh if they are somebody like you know and you think that they might listen to your advice, you can advise them. Otherwise, you just, you know, leave them because because it's it there's no good outcome for that, you know. I mean, there's a reason why it, you know, Al Halaj was executed, you know, and that that didn't come just from the Sultan, you know, even Al-Halaj himself said that that came, you know, straight from the Hadra, Inshallah. you know, that, that, that was decreed from the Hadra because of his not, you know, observing the proper etiquette. Inshallah. And so if that is, you know, if that is the case, you know, then we, we should know that there's no good outcome to people spreading secrets, you know, openly. Inshallah. Wow. Thank you so much, uh, Imam Talut, for a very insightful class. I think a lot of people managed to get a benefit from the clarification, alhamdulillah. And, uh, and I, I think it's a very important class for if, whether you're in a tariqah or not, uh, those wayfaring on the spiritual path, especially on certain terms that might get, we get confused. And also on uh, perhaps once you're in a tariqah or you're in the, uh, you know, walking a path, you know, how do you, deal with the social aspects of people around you. I think it's very important clarification. That's, that's going to come up, inshallah, in the, in the etiquettes of companionship. Okay. And that, that is one of the, the, the um, things that I love about this introduction of uh, a lot of Ibn Sai is that it's uh, while he focuses on the Tijani Tariqa, many of its lessons and many of its, its uh, points are applied to, to any path, you know. So this is uh this is one of the the great uh this is one of the things about the 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 awliya is that you know Allah makes their benefit spread you know uh, openly instead of just to their particular people. Mashallah. Thank you so much, Imam. Um, May Allah bless you and keep you safe. Inshallah, we hope to see you again uh, okay. next week for the class. Inshallah. May Allah Inshallah. bless you. With that, mm -hmm. uh, salamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Wa alaikum salam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. You too. Alhamdulillah. Bismillah. Alhamdulillah, uh, we've come to the end of uh, the class. Uh, there was a uh, Knowing Allah uh, book. Uh, rather, the book is Bughiyatul Mustafid by Shaykh Ibn Arabi al Sa'i, uh, Knowing the Path to Allah. Uh, and um, yeah, and that was conducted by Imam Talud Dawood. And we do have these classes every Saturday in Singap uh, Singapore time, 12 p.m. So you guys can actually play back this video once this video ends. Uh, you can also check out the class, inshallah, next week. We do have uh, one announcement. We'd like to promote our poetry online class, our online poetry class, rather. Reflections from the Heart, uh, a workshop by uh, Sister Sukina Pilgrim. Uh, she is a poet, a spoken word artist, a playwright, a workshop facilitator, and event organizer, of, uh, and co-founder of female hip-hop duo Poetic Pilgrimage. So she has a creative writing workshop that uh, she conducts across the world. And she has played an intrinsic role within the British Muslim creative community. And her work is featured on BBC News, World Service and Asia Network, ITV Channel 4, Al Jazeera, and, all, and you know, people, uh, platforms like Huffington Post, Daily Mail, and many other international media outlets have actually covered her work. Uh, 2017, she actually conducted a TEDx talk as well when she talked about the potential healing power of poetry. So yeah, she, her, she has a first play, an Afropean human being, uh, Afropean human being premiere at the Royal Flemish Theatre in Brussels uh, recently in February. So a uh, uh, heavy hitter in the poet, poet, poem industry, I would say, uh, a heavy hitter poet. So I really hope that inshallah, if you guys are free, um, you guys can check out this online workshop happening actually 28th of June tomorrow. Uh, Singapore time, 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. The poster is out on social media. Uh, it's $20 per person. Uh, if you'd like to find out more, you can uh, text this number, plus 658402-4273. Plus 658402-4273. The closing date, uh, we, we're still open. Uh, so tickets are starting fast. So um, do uh, reach out to us if you are interested, inshallah. And uh, with that, we've come to the end of the class. May Allah bless all of you. Please continue to pray for us and our volunteers and the work that we do. We hope that Allah uh, accept it and forgive us for any shortcomings. Uh, may Allah bless all of you. 
may Allah protect all of us and um, may Allah keep all of us in good health so that we can continue to learn, inshallah. With that, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.